Hello, Teacher M over here. Let's study and review for the STAR test. Be ready to take down notes. You definitely got this. Which number would be located in the shaded part of the diagram? So, everybody already knows what are rational numbers and uh, the different names that we can name them. Okay, specifically, some can be called counting numbers, some can be called whole numbers, there's a set of whole numbers, and there are numbers that we cannot call whole numbers, such as integers, or the rational numbers like fractions, decimal, and percents. Okay, so in this case, which among the choices will be placed in the shaded uh, part of the diagram? Letter A is negative 1.5, and it is a decimal. Therefore, you, can know, you cannot call it a whole number or an integer. Therefore, it goes where it says rational numbers. Same thing with 50%. It is a rational number. Number 10 on letter C can be called a counting number because we count with number 10. It's a whole number, and it's also part of the integers on a number line. But which specifically can be placed on the integer is the negative 9 because it cannot be called as counting or whole, but it is part of your number line, therefore it's an integer. Therefore, it goes here where it says integers. Okay, let's move on to the next. The expression shown can be used to calculate the amount of money in dollars a grocery store customer should receive in change when paying with $50. So the expression is given. What is the hint or the strategy here is PEMDAS. Okay, we need to follow the order of operations. So PEMDAS, the letter P stands for parentheses, so everything inside the parentheses should be done first. Then inside the parentheses, you have to apply again the rules. Um, we have multiplication here and here, and therefore we have to do them first. Then bring down the rest of the expression. Now we add everything to find the total cost. Now the last thing to do is subtract it from the money that the customer is handing the cashier. How much will be the change? Go ahead and subtract correctly. The table shows the fraction of students from different grade levels who are in favor of adding new items to the lunch menu at their school, which list shows the grade levels in order from greatest fraction of students to the least fraction of students. The first one is easy to change to a decimal. Just simplify it first and you're going to look at it as its simplest form, which is you can easily recognize that it's one-fourth, which is like a quarter. The next one, 2 20th, you can top in bottom out. It is 1 tenth, and if you move the decimal point twice to the right, it's 10% or 10 cents in terms of money. For the 10 50th, you can cancel the pair of zeros, and now you can see it's 1 fifth. And if you can remember, 1 fifth is 20 cents, or if you don't remember, top in bottom out correctly. For the next fraction, 50th over 75, you can simplify it first to make it uh, a number that you can easily work with. So 50 divided by 25 is 2. 75, it's like 75 cents divided by 25 cents is 3. So now it's in simplest form, 2 thirds. Who can recognize 2 thirds in decimal? Isn't it that's the repeating number? 0 0.66 with a bar notation. It's like 66 cents. Or as a percent, it's 66 and 2 thirds percent. For the two-fifths, top in, bottom out, it is four-tenths. Move the decimal point twice to the right, it's going to become 40%. Or we can just say 40 cents. Going back to the question, they want it from greatest to least. Looking at their decimal forms and think of them like money, you can arrange them easily from greatest to least. Serena bought five shirts for $4 each and spent $10 on lunch. She paid for the shirts and lunch using her debit card. The change in the balance of Serena's checking account can be represented by the expression shown, which is 5 times negative 4 plus negative 10. Which integer represents the change in the balance of Serena's checking account from these purchases? So following PEMDAS, we have to multiply first. 
When multiplying integers of different signs, your answer will have a negative sign. So just multiply good 5 times 4 is 20, and the answer is negative 20. Bring down the rest of the expression. Now we're going to add integers. Same signs you add and copy the same sign. The regular price of a camera is $150. The camera is on sale for 20% off the regular price. What is the sale price of the camera in dollars and cents? Step 1, you multiply the regular price with the decimal form of the given percent. You got $30 as the discount, so you don't have to pay for that. Therefore, you have to subtract it from the $150 to get the sale price. $120 is the sale price. What is the value of the expression shown? So, you have to follow PEMDAS here, the order of operations. Nothing is inside the parenthesis, so you're going to do exponent first, which is going to be the 2 to the 3rd power. So 2 to the 3rd power means 2 times 2 times 2, which is going to be 8. Then bring down the rest of the expression. Next is divide. Remember division of integers. You just divide, and the sign will be negative if they're different signs. Then copy the rest of the expression down. Do add and subtract from left to right, whichever comes first from left. Which ordered pair best represents the coordinates of a point that could be the third corner of a right triangle? And we know a right triangle has three corners and that there's a right angle inside that triangle. And as you can see, two corners are already given. This one and this one. Okay, so what we're going to do is find the third corner. Go ahead, draw a right triangle first. And then notice that one of the corners or a pair of corners are actually aligned, aligned with each other to make it, you know, to make one corner a right angle. So the third corner must be aligned either on this dot here or the other okay so let's go ahead and try the ones that are given here the input and the output the ordered pairs that I have written on the side so this negative 3 on the X is here and then the positive 1 it's a cross positive 1 that means it's aligned and if you connect them it's gonna create a right triangle now let's try the next pair of ordered pairs So the input here is positive 4, so I'll be here on positive 4 on the right side of the x. And then I'll go down to negative 5, so I'll go down here. The dot will be here. And as you can see, it's aligned with this other dot that's given. So if you connect these three dots, it's still going to form a right triangle, even though it's upside down. It still has that perfect angle there that's like an L. Now let's try the next pair of ordered pairs. Will it form a triangle? So the, the input is positive 3, so I'll be here. And then I'll go up to positive 1, so the dot will be here. Will that form a right triangle? Go ahead, connect. Look, there's no perfect L there. There's no 90 degree angle. Therefore, this one is not going to form a right angle if that is the third corner. Okay, just remember the third corner should be aligned with one of the dots in order for them, when connected, will form a right angle, okay? If, not, if it's not aligned with one of the dots on the X, either X or Y, then it's not going to form a right angle. All right. Keisha placed the painting in the center of a dark sheet of paper. And here are the other information given. The length of the sheet of paper is twice the length of the painting. Twice means times two. The width of the sheet of paper is twice the width of the painting. So that also means times two of the width of the painting. The question is, what is the area in square inches of the paper that is not covered by the painting? Now that you have the length and the width of the paper, multiply it to get the area. Now find the area of the painting. So the area of the painting is 35 square inches. Now, they're asking for the area that's not 
covered okay by the painting area of the paper that's not covered by the painting that means this ones the gray ones are not covered by the painting so what are we gonna do with the area of the painting and the area of the entire paper you have to subtract them so when you subtract this area that's covered with the painting it's gonna leave you the area that is not covered by the painting so here there's a book that Amanda will cover and we want to find the area of the cover and they said that the cover will be longer by one inch so you have to add it here this is the length and it's one inch wider so you have to add it here which is the width so now the length of the cover will be 20.5 inches okay after adding that one inch and the width of the cover will be 13 inches so now that we have the length and the width of the cover now we can find the area of the cover by multiplying base times height so the area of the cover is 266.5 square inches the list shows lengths in inches of each of the eight bracelets for sale which statement about the data is true so what you have to do is copy the numbers down okay now after copying the numbers down you go ahead and find first the easiest one range is the uh, easiest to find because you have you just have to subtract highest minus lowest so the range is 13 and look at letter D it says 10 therefore you cancel this because it's wrong then find the next one that's easier to find after range it would be median the middle number next easy to find is the IQR interquartile range since there's two numbers here on the right side, 15 and 20, add them and divide by 2 to get the middle number Q3. So now you go ahead and subtract Q3 minus Q1, but make sure you line up the decimal points correctly. The IQR is 8.5, and looking at letter C, it's wrong. Therefore, the answer is B, but let's go ahead and practice finding the mean or average. First, add everything. After adding everything, divide the sum by how many numbers you have. Which expression has a value of negative 10? So usually it's the shortest one that I advise my student to work on first. So they don't have to waste their time on a longer expression. So according to PEMDAS, it's multiplication first before you add or subtract. So you do this. That means it's multiplication of two integers. One is positive, one is negative, nine times negative five. Then apply addition of integers again. They're different signs, so you go ahead and subtract. This is not the answer because we're looking for a negative 10. Now let's try the other expression. You divide first before you add. 100 divided by negative two is negative 50. Then bring down the rest of the expression. Apply the rules in adding integers. Different signs you subtract and copy the sign of the one farther from zero or has a higher absolute value. So this is the expression we're looking for that has a value of negative 10. In the triangle EFG, the measure of angle E is 115 degrees and the measure of angle F is 10 degrees, which list gives sides of the triangle in order of their lengths from least to greatest side. First things first, you have to find the measure of angle G. Now that you have the measurement of angle G, let's go ahead and arrange the side lengths from least to greatest side length. Therefore, it's side GE, side FE, and side FG in order from least to greatest lengths. Petrov ran two laps around the track. Each lap around the track is a distance of one-fourth mile. What is the total distance Petrov ran in feet? So in this case, we have to convert, okay, from miles to yards to feet. So first things first, we know that from your materials, reference material chart, that one mile is 1,760 yards. But here we don't have one mile, it's just one fourth mile. 
So change that to decimal, multiply it by 1,760 yards. So we'll find out how many yards is equal to just one fourth mile. So now we know that there are 440 yards equal to that one fourth mile. We need now to convert it to feet. And we know that in one yard, there are three feet. But we have 440 yards, so multiply 440 yards by three feet. Now, this 1,320 feet is just for each lap, one lap, but we need it in two laps. So the last thing to do here is multiply it by the number of laps they want it, okay, which is two laps. Muffins are sold by the dozen at a bakery. The table shows the costs for different dozens of muffins sold at the bakery. As you can see, the table shows you the first column as the number of dozen of muffins. For so, And the second column is the cost in dollars. So if you're buying two dozen of muffins, it's going to cost you $17. Four dozens of muffins will be 34 It's like double the 17 right? And so on. Uh, but the question is about the cost of 40 dozen muffins. How much will it be? So what you, what you can do is look at the table and get some information from it. So it's like setting up a proportion, right? You know that the 4 is a factor of 40. So you can easily change it by multiplying it by 10. So do the same thing at the bottom. The $34 will be times 10 as well, which is going to be this. So this is the cost of 40 dozen muffins. You can also find the unit cost in this situation. By dividing that $17 by 2, you'll get uh, the cost of one dozen. So this is the cost of one dozen of muffins. Then you can multiply that by 40 dozen and you're still going to get $340. And you got the same thing, $340. So unit cost will help you also to find the cost of other number of dozen of muffins, okay? By finding the unit cost, you can just multiply that by whatever number of dozen they have on the question, okay? The playground at a park is shaped like a trapezoid. The dimensions of the playground are shown in the diagram. What is the area of the playground in square feet? So what you do is look at your reference material guide and copy the formula for trapezoid shape. And the formula is base plus base times height times one half. And we all know, we repeatedly said this in our class, that multiplying by one half is also the same thing as dividing by two, okay? So don't forget to divide by two because it's just half of a parallelogram, that trapezoid is half of a parallelogram. Therefore, the area of this trapezoid, whose height is 8 and the two bases is 6 feet and 24 feet, is 120 square feet. Okay? Follow the rules, follow the formula correctly. A baby weighed 4.25 pounds at birth. At the end of five months, the baby weighed three and a half times its birth weight. How many pounds did the baby weigh at the end of five months? So look for keywords. You have to read twice or more to understand the problem. Which statement about the product of three-fifths and one-half is true? Remember that a fraction that has a smaller numerator top number, then the bottom number, will always make the other number smaller than it is when they are multiplied by this fraction, whose top number is smaller than the bottom. It's like taking just a part of the other one and making it smaller. Okay, good luck on your test. Always remember you can go back here on my channel. Subscribe so you'll get more videos. Good luck and I'll see you in class.